Hey everybody, it's Eli here. And just recently I got a brand new piece of technology. It's a smart speaker from Google called the Google Home. And it has Google Assistant built right in. Now for those who don't know, Google Assistant is Google's artificial intelligence agent. It's much like Apple Siri and Amazon's Alexa. And it's also built into uh, most uh, new Android smartphones. But the version that comes built into the Google Home has greater functionality than the phone version does. Now Google started shipping these devices about six months ago, but just recently they've added a greater functionality and more partner integrations. And they promise to add a bunch more in the near future. Setting up the device is fairly easy. First, you download the Google Home app, you go ahead and link it to your Google account, and then you can personalize the device. For instance, you can let it know what music accounts you use to listen to music. YouTube, Pandora, Spotify, and Google Music are all currently supported. But what else can the Google Home do? For starters, the Google search engine is always within earshot. To wake the device, just use the word Google preceded by one of the two wake commands, which are either OK or Hey. For instance, Hey Google, do I need an umbrella today? No, rain is not expected today in Lexington Oaks, FL. The forecast is 94 degrees and partly cloudy. OK Google, who sings Shape of You? Shape of You was recorded by Ed Sheeran. OK Google, where was he born? He was born in Hebden Bridge, United Kingdom. So one of the cool features of the Google Assistant is that it can keep track of conversation context. So in the last example, I didn't need to ask specifically where was Ed Sheeran born, just where he was born. Google Assistant already knew who I was talking about. Just about anything that's available from a Google search can be requested. Hey Google, what time does TJ Maxx close today? TJ Maxx is normally open on Mondays from 9.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., but these hours may be affected by Memorial Day. Today's Memorial Day. Okay, Google. How long does it take to get there? Driving to TJ Maxx will take you 10 minutes. Okay, Google. Tell me a joke. Okay, here you go. What's Forrest Gump's password? One what? Forrest One. One Forrest One. <laughs> Now, aside from Google search data, Google can also get data from your Google profiles, such as travel time to work and calendar events. And where Google really shines is that you can add up to six individual accounts to the Google Home, each one distinguishable by that person's voice. So for instance, if my wife and I both had our accounts synced to the Google Home and I asked about my calendar for the day and she asked about hers for the day, it will be able to distinguish our voices and provide the correct information. Now that's cool. Another unique feature of the Google Home is that it's a Chromecast device that can control other Google Chromecast devices. So what does that mean? Since it's a Google Chromecast device, that means you can request for it to stream music and playlists. For instance, hey Google, play my playlist. Okay, here's some music on Google Play Music. You can even request for it to play your favorite radio station. Hey Google, Play 93.3 FLZ. Streaming 93.3 FLZ from iHeartRadio. But like I mentioned before, if you have other Chromecast devices, you can have the Google Home play music on any other device or group of devices. Play Marion Hill in the front room. Okay, Marion Hill from Google Play Music playing on front room. This works for Chromecast video devices as well. You can play services like Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. Controlling Chromecast devices is just a tip of the iceberg. Google is picking up steam, adding functionality to integrate with different home automation protocols like Wemo, SmartThings, and Wink, meaning that you can control smart bulbs, smart switches, thermostats, and other devices. Hey Google, what's the temperature downstairs? It's currently 77 degrees and heat cool mode is set to keep the temperature between 69 and 76 degrees. Okay Google, set the downstairs temperature to 75 degrees. You got it, setting the main floor to 75 degrees. Hey Google, turn off the stereo. Sure, turning the stereo off. Now in my house, I don't have many smart devices, but that's where custom programming comes in. 
using popular IoT or Internet of Things services like IFTTT, Stringify, Maker Channel, and Auto Voice for Android, you can program and create custom commands. Needless to say, some of these things are reserved for the more advanced techie types. So for instance, by using Auto Voice and an old Android phone as an automation server, I'm able to send custom commands to things like my TV and my cable box. Hey Google, turn on the TV. Sure, here's Auto Voice. Turning the TV on. Hey Google, what am I watching? Sure, here's Auto Voice. You are watching Channel 10, WTSP. The show is the bold and the beautiful. Hey Google, ask Auto Voice to change to channel 212. Sure, here's Auto Voice. Okay, channel 212. Hey Google, pause the TV. Sure, here's Auto Voice. You got it. Hey Google, unpause the TV. Sure, here's Auto Voice. Okay. Hey Google, Turn on captions. Sure, here's auto voice. Turning closed captions on. Hey Google. Change input to Apple TV. Sure, here's auto voice. Okay, switching input to Apple TV. Hey Google. Turn off the TV. Sure, here's auto voice. Turning off the TV. And with some fancier coding, I got Google Home to extract data and files from web pages too. So there you have it. Google definitely has a hit on their hands. The Google Home can be both fun and practical, and it has a lot to offer right out of the box. But with home automation integration, put a couple Google Homes in different rooms of your house, and the house of the future is here right now. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you would like me to review any other kind of tech device, please include that as well.